as someone who has consistently taken bold and decisive actions at various turning points, how do you think this is going to enable Virgin Atlantic to survive, more importantly, to thrive in the new normal? Well, first of all, Keshav, good to see you and thank you for hosting me. It's really a pleasure to be on this platform with you and WNS. Um, you know, that's really the, the big question. First of all, we had no other option but to fight for our survival. And our fight continues, by the way, it's not over yet. And it's come at a devastating um, cost to jobs. You know, we've lost thousands of colleagues. One in every two jobs has been lost at Virgin Atlantic, of course, now. But the future will bring, hopefully, an ability to welcome so many of these people uh, and our colleagues and friends back to Virgin Atlantic, just as we've done um, after 9-11 and other um, you know, big, dramatic uh, turning points, as you say. But for us, you know, we've coined this very simply as survival, love, which is really getting back, back, back to our best for our people and our customers, and then profitability. We must use this crisis, the fact that we have done things so dramatically different, cut our costs, improve our cash, changed our network, and I said, of course, at a devastating price to jobs, but the future will allow us to become sustainably profitable. So, you know, everybody talks about using a, a crisis to be better. Um, and I think what will emerge from this is a leaner, meaner Virgin Atlantic that can still be and will be the most loved travel company, but will do so in a way that becomes sustainably profitable. And I think it's fair to say that our financial performance has not been as good as we would have liked in the years ahead of this crisis. Of course, dur during this crisis, it was all about survival. Fantastic. So lean, mean fighting machine uh, with a solid balance sheet is what you're indicating. Well, Virgin Atlantic's you know, cargo only passenger aircraft flights program is now reported to have given the highest cargo revenues in May 2020. While this has prompted you to increase your flights by 33%, do you think that adding more passengers or and cargo combinations uh, aircraft to your fleet will help? Yeah, so first of all, just a bit of background for anybody who's listening. I think it's, it's, it's just an amazing uh, statistic that I will tell you. But from April the 20th, 2020, for a period of 90 days, we had no passengers on our planes. And if I would have said that to any airline in the world or any business, you know, you will have no customers for a period of 90 days in the, in the, in the midst of this amazing crisis, uh, that'd be, you know, unheard of. But what we did and what the cargo team did, but it's an operation for everyone in our company, is quickly transformed our passenger planes to cargo only planes. And it has been the lifeline of our company because it has kept us flying throughout the pandemic. It has kept, kept us match fit, you know, for an airline not to fly at all. You know, it's amazing how quickly people forget, you know, what it means to be in operational mode all the time. And of course, in 2021, I would expect that the demand for passengers would make cargo only flight or cargo focused flights as they are really right now, less of an issue. But in the first half of uh, uh, 2021, you would expect us to be fully participating in testing. You know, we're you now uh, doing special flights for our government, bringing test kits, but also the vaccine, as we know, which was today approved in the UK, requires very special logistics. Now, I don't know how much we can participate in that, but we are fully geared for that. Um, so I think, you know, we'll take us, you know, it's going to be a record year in 2020 for cargo operations, uh, up 30 to 40% in the midst of the pandemic. Next year should be a very good year, but ultimately our aim is to get back to flying as many passengers as we can, and of course, continuing cargo operations, but in a more balanced way.